Okay, I'm back. Okay, so I don't think I um got a text. Um, here's the thing. Now, there's somebody do a lot of things to you, right? You not wanting. to be around them and you not wanting to affiliate with him, with them. You give them respect, you love them. But as my grandmother used to say, you love them from a distance. Now, Now, people take, people take other people's ways out of context, and then they want to try to relate it to the Bible, so that you can feel guilty for what you're doing. And then you stop, and then you come over to their side. Now, as I said, I got a text about somebody going somewhere. Not going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. They want to know if I'm going in so many words. There's a payment that needs to be paid. And if I am going, then they'll pay, they'll pay whatever needs to be paid at that time, at that moment. So, presuming that they're not going to pay the rest. Not saying they are, not saying they're not. So, now, here's where I have some issues with that. Why is you doing that? Because you don't love me. You don't care nothing about me. Now, because you don't show it. And I'm only going by what they say. Are you supposed to show it? If you love somebody, you'll show it. I don't go too much about it, by the show. I don't go so much about show because a woman that gets abused by a man, he shows it. He may buy her all the stuff that she wants, give her all she need, supply her with all the stuff that she wants and need. 
taking her, taking her kids, but still abuse her verbally and then physically, and then make her feel unloved, even though he's supplying everything for her. Oh my God. Even though she's he's applying everything for her, he's still not showing the love. Well, I ain't gonna say not showing the love, but she still he or she, because I ain't gonna put it all on a man. A woman could be abused, so he or she is still not feeling loved. So now. When these feelings are not being shown, is not possessed to be being shown, then that individual that you keep beating up and you're not showing love to has come to the decision that they gonna love you from a distance. They not gonna treat you bad. They not gonna disrespect you. And I feel that the best way to not, for me, what I've learned, and I believe so far, and I'm gonna keep going, to make, to make sure that I'm right. But I believe that the way the Lord is teaching me not to disrespect leadership or anybody in leadership or to have them feel like they've been disrespected is not to say nothing. Whatever needs to be spoken, that's what I said. And if you come and you ask me something, then, excuse me, then I'm going to respect you enough to answer, right? And if I feel like things are being said to start trouble, then I'm not going to answer. I'm not going to respond. I'm not going to say nothing. I'm going to go on and speak to you just like you ain't even say nothing. And if you don't bring it up, I ain't going to bring it up. Why? Because I don't want you to feel that I'm disrespecting you. I don't want to feel disrespected, you know. And people have a tendency to ask things of you, ask questions of you, ask your opinion. And then when you respond back, they ignore you. You talking to them and, and they, oh my goodness, here we go. What you ask for? That's disrespectful. What you ask a question for if you don't want to answer? And then when you, when the person does answer, it's not what you want to hear. So you disrespect the person. You don't have the, you don't give the courtesy to hear the person out because you never know maybe what the person is saying may help you but because it's coming from me oh she can't help me so let's get to the nitty gritty because this video is not about me it's about my situation and how I'm dealing with or going to deal with it so now something was texted to me I didn't answer still haven't answered don't plan on answering because when it comes to money, let me tell you something, how I am with money. I will spend money like, like a runner got to drink water. Money really doesn't mean anything to me. If I'm caught in a bind and I need money or got money to get me out that bind, I'm going to use it. And then I'll suffer the consequences later. I'm 
a person that does things right then and there to solve problems. Some things I have to think on. Some things I think on. You know what I'm saying? I, I try to pray on, I pray on all things. So I'm not going to say I try to pray on all things. I pray on all things. And I try my best to wait for the results that comes from God. Now, when I feel that God has given me the results, I act upon it. And then I would know for a surety that that was his results is when the outcome turns out good. If it turns out bad, then I know that wasn't God's plan. That wasn't in his plan. And I got misled or I put my feelings involved in it. Or I took, a, took my own discretion in the situation and made my own results, which came back negative. So, with this situation, I ain't say nothing. I'm waiting. And, and, and to be honest, there's some, some things, here's some things. I've heard, I've heard them say, you ain't got to go to God for everything. And you don't. But... If you walking in the spirit, he will lead you, right? You, if you, if you put him first, then that's something that is automatic that you do. It's like a habit. So I guess you don't really have to pray and ask God about it because all you have to do is say, Lord, you know me, you know me in our relationship and that's it. But if you not know, if you not a person that goes to God for everything, I don't care down to what shoes you wear, should I wear, then you would have to, at different times, consult him. So, I feel that he has already answered it, and I feel he has told me not to say nothing, you know, because... The individual have not came to me yet. They sent a text, and I'm the type of person, if I send a text to somebody that is of importance to me and I'm expecting an answer, and I don't get an answer within two minutes, I'm calling you. And I'm asking you, oh, I don't know whether you got my text, or I asked them, did you get my text? Well, I sent a text to you stating la da 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 and... What, a, what, what, what is your output? Are you going to do it? Whatever it is. Whether it's a question, whether it's a question text, whether it's a statement text, whether it's a I'm not sure text, whatever it is. I expect an answer right then and there. You see what I'm saying? And y'all, y'all, y'all may say, well, you expect an answer right then and there, but you don't give an answer right then and there. Because, see, this is why I say with the Holy Ghost, he give you insight on people. Of course, if people already know the answer, then what you asking for? If you want to confirm something, then you say, oh, okay, I wish to confirm that you are going. Or I heard that you were going, so I'm asking you, are you going? People like to dig and get information when they already know things. Now, I may know something, and I may, I may... Want to dig to get the information. But the reason why I'm digging is because I want the truth. And if it got something to do with you in your life, then it ain't got nothing to do with me. Even though you may mention my name, even though you may put me in the middle of some of it. But if it doesn't have anything to do with me, I'm not getting in it. So. When certain things has happened so often over the years. Now, you know, and it may be a time space between. Maybe a month, two months, two months, but never a year. It's always a month, two months, three months, a day, a week, two weeks, something like that. So my thing is, is that when people say, I do this and I do that. And the person don't never give me the money back. The person don't never say nothing back. Don't never come to me and say nothing about what I lent to them. I didn't give it to them. Okay, so 
I can understand if I say, okay, can I borrow this? Or can you lend me this? And I'll give it back. And then if I don't give it back, then okay, I can understand you saying something about it. But who you saying it to? Maybe you should be saying it to me. If you saying it to the congregation, they ain't got no business knowing that. I feel you saying it to the congregation because you don't spoke to the congregation about it. Or if you didn't spoke to the congregation, now you got the congregation thinking, well, who is she talking about? Well, now I'm not going to lend no money to nobody in here because I don't know who she's talking about. And if I was to get that feeling, I wouldn't lend no money to the person that's talking as well. Because who knows, maybe they the one who ain't giving the money back. And they want to project it off like it's somebody else and it's really them. But let me just say about me. You see what I'm saying? Now, if somebody comes to me and asks me, uh, Sharon, Evangelist Jordan, Sharon, Sabrina, you know, dog, cat, whatever, bird, gorilla, whatever you want to call me um, at that present time and moment. Can you lend me forty dollars? I'm gonna give it back to you such and such a time. Here's my reaction. Always been my reaction. All right, no problem. Okay, no problem. Now, if I had money and a lot of money, or over that forty dollars, I could have sixty dollars. And I'm speaking from experience, from what I have done. I can have $60 and somebody can ask me for the $40. I know I'm only going to have 20 So you know what I think? I think about, okay, so they'll be paying me back at such and such a time. Right? Now, when the time comes, and I'm going to be honest, when the time comes around for the payment, and I don't hear nothing from the person, and the person doesn't say nothing, and I'm not really in need of the money, I don't say nothing. And it could go for months, it can go for years, and I'll never get that $40 back. Now, what may happen is that I may be in a bind, right? And I really don't like to do this because I know how I feel when people do it to me. But um, sometimes it comes... Okay, just a minute, I gotta hear that. Um, but I know sometimes it happens. Right? So, that same person that owe you the $40, it comes down that you need $40 or you need $20. And you remember that person owes you. I remember. Let me talk about me. I said, oh, well, I can go to Jane because Jane owe me $40. But, they, but she may not have the $40. Maybe she'll have the 20 So, I may text Jane or I may call Jane and ask Jane. Oh, Jane, do you think you can give me that money? Do you think you can give me some of the money? Or um, all of the money? By such and such because I need it for this. Right? Now, Jane may be saying, oh, she's just saying that because she know I owe money. And now she want to act like she need money. She just want me to give the money back to her. Some people think that because I know I think that if I owe somebody money and they come to me asking me, uh, I got this bill I got to pay. Do you think you can give me that money that, that you owe me? Now, I start thinking you ain't got no bill. You just want the money. Just say it. But because I'm learning, I'm learning this a little. The Holy Ghost will lead and guide you. Because I ain't no psychic and because I ain't got no powers. To read people's minds. I mean, just, just, just randomly read people's minds. Maybe in the spiritual realm I can read people's minds. But just randomly, just, oh, let me see what that person thinking. Because they're asking me for money, let me see. No, I don't have that power, right? That's something that, that, that happens when God wants it to happen with me. I'm able to read what people is thinking and how they're feeling when they, especially when they coming towards me. When I say towards me, I don't mean walking. When they coming towards me in a certain situation, talking, whether they talking, accusing, yelling, or just calm, calmly speaking with me, the Lord will let me know what's going on with the person. 
I can actually read their thoughts. It's no lie. Okay. But it's not something that I'm able to do at demand. So now, that may happen where, <coughs> where I would have to ask back for the money at the time. But that is because <coughs> that is because I'm in need of the money, right? But half the time, some you know, I I won't even ask that person. You know, I'll try to wait it out, and I'm telling you, I'm not poor, right? I'm not middle class, so I guess you will call me the low class. You got poor, low class, middle class, high class, right? So I guess you will call me middle class, right? Because I do got MCM. I do got Christian Louboutin. I do got LV, you know? I got these things that does cost money that I paid for. So that will be middle class. You see what I'm saying? So I got the money to buy those items, but I don't have the money to buy a car or to buy a house. I will be high class then if I could go and get a house, right? So I would consider myself middle class. But I am not hung up on money. I love to spend money. I love it too much to be hung up on it. You see what I'm saying? And... If I can help somebody, you know, I will. And I would. There has been times people have came to me, call me up, and say, listen, I need, can you lend me $100 or something? Because I need to pay my rent. There was somebody that asked me that. I'm trying to think who it was, but somebody asked me. And they was like, well, I'm going to pay you back. I think it was my nephew. I'm not really sure. I think it was my nephew. And I gave it to him. And he asked me another time, and I gave it to him. Each, see, cause, th- 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 each time he asked, I had it. And this is another way to know when God wants you to give somebody something. When somebody comes to you and asks you for something, and you have it. I mean, let, let me explain this. You could be a person that had $500,000 in the bank, right? But that doesn't mean that you are always available to give money away because you got this $500,000 $500, in the bank. Because, see, that $500,000 is broken up and however you got it broken up, and you probably can't access it when you want to. But then if you got some money over here, underneath your pillow, underneath your mattress, that you keep in stashed, and somebody comes to you and say, um, I need $400 to pay, to pay my rent. And you know you got $800 underneath your mattress. And it's just there. It's not there for you to use for anything that you need done at that time. And, and anytime soon, and you open up your mouth and you tell a lie and you say, no, I don't got it. You're lying. And the truth ain't in you. And that is the time that the Lord is using you to help somebody in need. And that's what he means when he said, you, your brother is in need and you shut up your bowels of mercy against them or from them how is it that the son of man shouldn't do the same thing to you I'm, I'm paraphrasing you go to God and you call on Jesus who's the mediator between God and man I need this I need this help I need that da, 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 da. why should God help you now he he said a thousand cattles on a thousand hills is his If you ask anything in my name, I'll give it to you. Seeking you shall find. Asking the door shall be open. No, knocking the door shall be open. Seeking you shall find. Knocking the door shall be open. No. Ask 
and ye, what is it? Who's here, devil? Ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The devil was trying to take the verse and make me a liar. Read the word wrong. No. So, therefore, these are promises that's in the Bible that we can always go to and believe that it can be done. So now if some, if I come to you and ask you for the $400, you ain't got the $400, but yet still you know you got it to spare because you could have and can't spare it, then that is a lie. So therefore, I am very independent. There was a time when I was dependent on every and everybody, every and anybody. There was a time I used to go to anybody and ask them for money. And it wasn't because I had a habit. It wasn't because I was smoking and drinking. This is me in salvation through the, through the, the stages of being saved. And I still was saved. But I felt like I had to always have money. If I didn't have money, then I was nothing. Then not even thinking that without Christ, I'm nothing. But our money was my idol. See, money was my God. I had to have money. Whenever I wanted to go and do something, I had to have money. So, I could be expecting money tomorrow, but I would go to somebody and ask them for $20. Knowing I get paid tomorrow, and then when I get paid tomorrow, I don't pay them nothing. Because now I got the money in my hand. I ain't really saying, oh, I got the money, so I ain't got to pay them. No, I ain't even thinking like that. Because my intentions is to pay them when I get the money. And when I get the money, it comes to my head to go pay, pay Sue. Go pay Sue that $20. Sue can wait. Because I'm going over here and I'm going to spend it on whatever I want to spend it on. I'll go and ask money. Ask for money over here. And then go over here and ask for money. And then go over there and ask for money. So now I got like $30, $40, $50 now. Because I just got my, and the money is this, I'm be honest with you, the money that's there, I don't have to spend it. I'm, I'm trying to find something to spend it on, but I don't have to spend it. But what God has done for me is that he has made me depend on him. Anything that I want and need, he made me see that I needed to come to him. He took me to a point in my life where I was broke. And when I say broke, <clears throat> I mean broke. I had, as people would say, I ain't had I didn't have a dime to my name. It was no lie. There was no dimes and no pockets. There was no quarters, heads, and no drawers. There was no dollars and no pockets. I was broke. And I was broke and a bill was due. I was broke and I ain't had no food. See, the Lord made me broke at a time that I was in need. Of something. See, that's why the words say, if your brother's in need, you help him. And the Lord will let you know if they're in need or not. Or whether they're just trying to get money because they don't want to be broke. So, I will be in need. Right? And I will ask. And I wouldn't get. And I will go to another person to ask. And I wouldn't get. And I go to the next person to ask, and I wouldn't get. So you know what? I went to God. And when I went to God and asked God, I got. 
and sometimes I got from the person who didn't want to give. Because he would lead me to the person to ask. And that will be the person that would give me. Now, all the people that would that have turned their backs on me, all the people that never helped me, all the people that oh, that was not there for me. Here's the funny thing about that and them was that God would make them come. And give me. And I would need at the time. At the time. And I would be like, no, I'm all right. Well, you go ahead. You take this. Use it for such and such. Use it for your grandchildren. Use it for buy you something to eat or something. I'd be like, well, okay. So I take it. And you know what happened? Maybe two or three weeks later, I need that. That money they gave me. I didn't need it then. So God was using them to supply my need two weeks later. Because he knew that I was going to need what they were giving me two weeks later. So when the Lord leads me to take things from people, when they offer me, when the Lord leads somebody to offer me something, he always leads me to take it or not to take it. And if he tells me not to take it, I don't take it. Just like in this incident. Don't take it. Do not take it. I'm supplying your needs. So you go ahead and let me supply them. This is what you use. There it goes. You see what I'm saying? Okay, so I'll be right back.